Hello, my name is Professor Hudson, and you are about to view narrated PowerPoint lectures for Chapter 9. Chapter 9 focuses on cancer and mitosis. Please be aware that this PowerPoint lecture on mitosis and cancer contains material from several textbooks. It corresponds to Chapter 9 in your customized textbook. Please be aware that some of the figures may be different from the textbook that you are using. Also be aware that the content in this lecture may be in a slightly different order than the order in chapter 9 of your textbook. The narrated PowerPoint lectures on cancer and mitosis are going to be divided up into several segments. First, let's focus on cell division. Most cell division results in genetically identical daughter cells. The topics that will be covered for this concept include why do cells divide, what occurs during the prokaryotic cell cycle, and how is the DNA in eukaryotic chromosomes organized. This first section, why do cells divide, will also be combined with what occurs during the prokaryotic cell cycle for this first segment in the narrated PowerPoint lectures. Cells reproduce by cell division, in which a parent cell normally gives rise to two daughter cells. Notice the single cell in this figure has divided into two cells. Also notice that the chromosome number remains the same in the daughter cells as it was in the parent cell. This is the essence of what happens in mitotic cell division. But why does this happen and how? Cells must divide in order for an organism to grow and develop. It is also needed for repair of wounds and injuries. When a cell divides, each daughter cell receives a complete set of hereditary information from the parent cell and about half its cytoplasm. The hereditary information is usually identical with that of the parent cell. The hereditary information in all cells is DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. When cells divide, the DNA is packaged in what we call a chromosome. The DNA in a chromosome consists of two long strands of nucleotides wound around each other as a ladder would look if it was twisted into a corkscrew shape. In this image we have a structure shown of DNA in its double helical form. Note the nucleotides given by the letters A, T, G, C. These letters make up the language of our genetic code. The specific sequence of nucleotides in genes spells out the instructions for making the proteins of a cell. When a cell divides, it replicates its DNA to make two identical copies and gives each daughter cell one of the two copies. This is why the daughter cells will have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell after mitosis is complete. Why do cells divide? Cell division is required for growth, development, and repair. Most multicellular organisms have three categories of cells. Stem cells, other cells that are capable of dividing, and permanently differentiated cells. The cell division of eukaryotic cells by which organisms grow or increase in number is called the mitotic cell division. After cell division, the daughter cells may differentiate, becoming specialized for specific functions. The repeating pattern of divide, grow, and differentiate, then divide again, is called the cell cycle. The cell cycle consists of interphase, which is broken down into three subphases, G1, S, and G2 and then mitosis and cytokinesis. 
interphase, the main goal of interphase is for the cell to prepare for cell division. And then in mitosis, the cell separates the duplicated chromosomes. And then in cytokinesis, the cell separates in half. Make sure you know the various stages of interphase and mitosis and cytokinesis and what happens in each stage. If we take a closer look at the types of cells that are found in living organisms, as mentioned prior, living organisms have stem cells, other cells capable of dividing, and permanently differentiated cells. Stem cells have two important characteristics, self-renewal and the ability to differentiate into a variety of cell types. When a stem cell divides, usually one daughter remains a stem cell, thus continuing the line. The other daughter eventually differentiates. Some stem cells in early embryos can produce any of the specialized cell types in the entire body. Stem cells must divide for the life of the organism. Some other cells capable of dividing include many cells of the bodies of embryos, juveniles, and adults uh, such as liver cells. Each type of cell typically differentiates into only one or two types of cells. Then there are permanently differentiated cells. These are cells that differentiate and never divide again, such as nerve cells. So in the living organism, you have cells that undergo mitotic cell division indefinitely until the cell ages and the cell dies. And then you have other cell types that divide or differentiate depending on the cell type or what is needed. And then you have a third cell type, which once they divide and differentiate, they never divide again. Cell division is also required for sexual and asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction occurs when offspring are produced by the fusion of gametes, such as sperm and eggs, from two adults. Reproduction in which offspring are formed from a single parent without having a sperm fertilized an egg is called asexual reproduction. Clones are offspring genetically identical to the parent and to each other, produced through asexual reproduction. So cells divide for growth, development, and repair, and then certain organisms use cell division for asexual reproduction. This slide shows some examples of organisms that use cell division for asexual reproduction. Bacteria, paramecium, hydra, and certain types of trees. Let's review. Remember, please note the letter that corresponds to the correct answer on a sheet of paper as you will need it for the lecture quiz later. Interphase consists of the blank stages of cellular growth and division. Choose the correct answer. And this is question one. Before we focus on eukaryotic cell division, let's focus on prokaryotic cell division. Cell division in prokaryotic cells occurs through a process called binary fission, aka prokaryotic fission. Prokaryotic cells contain a single circular chromosome. The prokaryotic chromosome is a ring of DNA. It's folded up in an area called the nucleoid and it's a thousand times the length of a cell. So prokaryotic cells typically have a single circular chromosome and they do not have a nucleus. Prokaryotic fission occurs in five stages. 
At the start of the growth phase, the single prokaryotic chromosome is usually attached at one point to the plasma membrane of the cell. During the growth phase, the circular DNA chromosome replicates producing two identical chromosomes that become attached to the plasma membrane at nearby but separate sites. As the cell increases in size, new plasma membrane is added between the attachment points pushing the duplicated chromosomes apart. The plasma membrane grows inward between the two chromosome copies. Fusion of membranes along the cell equator completes the separation of the cells, producing two daughter cells, each containing one of the chromosomes. The daughter cells are genetically identical to the parent cell. The daughter cells are clones of the parent cell. Let's review. Question 2. Prokaryotes primarily reduce by Choose the correct answer. This concludes the first segment of the narrated PowerPoint lectures for Chapter 9 on Cancer and Mitosis.